Hello, my dear friends, and welcome back to Weird Wife Week here on the Dr. Creepin' channel. <laughs> I know, you're going to look at the title of this one and think, hang on a minute, didn't he just read this story? Well, no, I didn't. I know it looks very similar, but this is actually a completely different story, not at all connected to the one that I just read on Monday and Wednesday. So, please stick around and give it a listen. Because even though it's completely separate, it does make for a good companion piece to the story that I read. So, my dear friend, it's time to sit back and relax with your favourite drink, and listen. My wife and I have been married for years now. For most of that time, well, I've slept on the couch. <clears throat> I <laughs> snore pretty loudly, and she's a light sleeper, so it works out best for everyone that I spend my nights on the couch. I don't mind. Our couch is against the back wall of the living room. From the couch, I can see the living room, the kitchen, and the hallway with the doors to the bathroom, the bedroom, and the outside. About three or four times per night, my wife's small bladder gets her up and sends her to the bathroom. The sound of the doors and movement wake me up pretty much every time. Sometimes I say hi, or sometimes I just pretend to still be asleep. Well, last night, something kind of weird happened. It was probably around two or three in the morning. I was awoken by the sound of the bedroom door opening and closing, and I opened my eye just enough to see the outline of my wife moving in the hallway. I noticed that the room kind of smelled like pennies. But then, the bathroom door didn't close. I could hear her moving around very quietly, and when I opened my eye again, she was moving slowly through the living room, stopping to examine every little picture and knick-knack along the way. I figured that maybe she was working her way to the kitchen to get some water, and was just being nostalgic or something. I didn't want her to think she'd woken me up, as she was clearly trying to be quiet, and I didn't want her to feel guilty. No, oh, this goes on for what feels like five minutes, then what feels like ten minutes. As we're pushing fifteen minutes of her just meandering around looking at stuff, I finally sit up and ask her, Is everything okay, sweetie? She turned, looked at me, and froze. She looked like the proverbial deer in the headlights. Her eyes were wide. She looked paralyzed with fear. Like I was some kind of giant monster that had just jumped out from around a corner. Becky? I asked. She screamed, or at least she did everything that would be a scream, but without the sound. It was like she was on mute, but she was clearly screaming. And then she ran. She ran out of the living room, into the hallway, and straight out the front door. Once she'd started running, I also got up. She was out of the house by the time I'd walked to the end of the carpet where the hallway began. Are you okay? I shouted to the door that she'd left open. At this point, I was more confused and worried for her than anything else. I walked over to the open door and looked outside, but she was nowhere to be seen. I began walking back to the living room to grab my robe and shoes. But, before I made it back to the carpet, the bedroom door opened, and my wife poked her head out. Did you say something? she asked. I reassured her that I hadn't. I closed the door to the house, I double-checked the lock, and I went back to my couch. I know that I wasn't dreaming. She asked me this morning why I was up, and said that she swore that I'd woken her up by shouting, Are you okay? The knickknacks were all a little bit out of place, and the picture frame that she'd been holding when I startled her was still on the floor. I have no idea what happened, but it sure was spooky. I don't think that I'm going to get much sleep tonight. So, after getting so many helpful comments suggesting things like sleepwalking, burglars, skinwalkers, interdimensional crossovers, and ghosts, 
my curiosity was tickled. I decided to have a sit down with my wife to tell her what happened and to see if she had noticed anything out of the ordinary. She seemed simultaneously relieved and worried when she told me that she had, in fact, noticed something unusual. She's not normally a calm person, so it was difficult for her to tell me what had happened in an easy-to-follow manner, so I'll summarize it as best as I can. She said that it had happened a few days before the night that prompted me to make the last post. She'd been asleep in bed when she was woken up by the bedroom door opening. She saw me slowly walk into the room. At first, she thought that maybe I'd come to tell her something, but I didn't say anything or sit on the bed like I normally would. She said that, at that point, she assumed that I was just being frisky. We used to have a pretty adventurous love life, and one of the things that she'd liked was for us to start out with her pretending to be asleep. She figured that maybe that's what I was doing. She even noticed that I'd apparently put on a new aftershave, as the room smelled like salty copper ever since I'd walked in. And so she did that. But I didn't pounce. I just putzed around the room, slowly and quietly, looking at stuff. I looked at the pictures on the dresser. I looked at, and even smelled, the clothes in the hamper. Then she realized something. She could very clearly hear me snoring out on the couch in the living room. She lay there, frozen in fear and trying to wake herself up as I continued to creep around the room. I was deliberately being quiet, but I was also definitely interacting with my environment, and that led to the occasional creak or light tap when something was set down. Now, she had had a history of night terrors and sleep paralysis as a kid, so she figured that was what was going on. At one point, she says that she whimpered, and I jumped like I was startled, went stiff as a statue, and stared at her with a furrowed brow for several minutes before going right back to what I was doing. Eventually, I just walked out of the room and closed the door. She's pretty sure that she heard the front door being opened and closed as well. She didn't leave the room for the rest of the night. She just figured out that the whole thing was just a nightmare, or an episode of sleep paralysis. It hadn't really been worth mentioning. Of course, now that I'd told her what had happened to me, she's really freaking out. That was definitely not me in the bedroom that night. I've never slept walked in my life. She's certain that it was definitely not her in the living room two nights ago either. I got to thinking about the smell that both of our experiences had in common. I definitely smelled it before. I mean... Like anyone else, I've given my keys or a handful of change a good sniff a few times in my life. But I'd also definitely smelled it out in the real world before, too. I distinctly remember catching a few whiffs of it back in November, while deer hunting in the early morning. Around that same time, I caught it while raking leaves in the evening before starting a nice fire. Sometimes over the winter, the inside of the car had that smell in the morning on my way to work. <laughs> I'd always given it literally zero thought. We've never been burgled, and the area is really safe. Still, we took an inventory of our stuff. There was nothing missing. Everything of value was where it was supposed to be. We looked around the house inside and out. There were no ominous scratch marks along the walls or anything like that. There was no giant monster tracks outside just the normal deer tracks along the driveway and around the bird feeders. The whole time that I was checking outside, I did have those prickly hair-inducing feelings like I was being watched. I chalked that up to my most recent experience and the scary story that my wife had just told me. There were no critters out and about, not even the handful of squirrels that always seemed to be around the bird feeders, so I'm sure that I was alone. Either way, I got myself back inside without dilly-dallying. We checked, closed, and latched all of the windows. The house has two doors, 
The back door is always locked. The front door is never locked because we live way up in the country and, again, it's always been really safe. It's nothing but woods. And I'm confident that raccoons can't work doorknobs yet. We made sure that the back door was locked and we locked up the front door as well. Some people suggested getting a camera. Well, I'm pretty cheap and lazy, but I'll definitely consider that if anything further happens. We've never had anything spooky like this happen before. Well, we're homebound for the weekend, but come Tuesday, I think I'll ask around town and work. Maybe someone else has had a similar thing happen. Maybe some local teenagers are out stealing underpants and loose change or something. We're going to sleep in the same bed tonight. For her, at least, it's going to be a long night. I'll sleep great, especially since I think that her new anxiety will keep the bathroom trips to a minimum. It's been two nights since the last update. I told my wife about having seen her in the living room, and she told me that she'd seen me in the bedroom. In both instances, it was definitely not us. We'd agreed to sleep in the same bed and to lock the front door. That first night, neither of us got much sleep. She was absolutely terrified, and I'd been totally wrong about the effect that would have on her bladder. She had to get up to use the bathroom just as much, if not more, than normal. Being scared, she required that I get up and escort her to the bathroom and back. It was a mild annoyance, but I got where she was coming from, and I was happy to oblige. While standing outside the bathroom door during one of these late night trips, I saw the front doorknob start to turn. I had a mini heart attack as I watched it slowly rotate and I breathed a silent sigh of relief when it clicked against the locking mechanism. Then, it did it again. And again, a little harder. Summoning all the courage that a fully grown man behind a locked door with another adult nearby can muster, I walked up to the door and looked through the peephole. That was stupid. It was night time. I couldn't see anything. As I slowly reached towards the switch to the outside lights, I heard the toilet flush from the nearby bathroom, followed by a rustling and blur of movement outside. I returned to my post outside of the bathroom door, waited while my wife took forever to wash her hands, and then went back to bed. She didn't need to know what had just happened. She was scared enough already. I didn't sleep for the rest of the night. I just waited and listened. I heard the doorknob jiggle one more time that night. I saw people-sized shadows move past the blinds. I could just barely hear the back door being jiggled. And then, finally, I heard a loud clang, a bang, and a strange long wheezing a frustrated moan I'd never heard anything like it if you ever got mad trying to fix something you throw your tool and shout ah well it was like that but the sound was made while inhaling air rather than exhaling it the sound woke up my wife who started freaking out and neither of us returned to sleep Nothing else happened that night. In the morning, secure in the safety of the sunlight and the hunting rifle in my hands, I took a walk around outside the home. The doorknob on the back door had been completely broken. The knob and some bent inside parts were on the ground. It had been turned until it broke. The door was still locked. I had to jimmy a screwdriver into the locking mechanism to get it open. The bird feeders had also been knocked over, but nothing else was out of sorts. I thought it over all morning and afternoon, but I finally decided to tell my wife what had happened last night and about the back door. She'd spent most of the day pacing around, worried, 
and I was really unsure as to whether I should worry her even more. As I suspected, that new information sent her over the edge. She wasted no time in grabbing a plastic shopping bag of clothes and heading out the door. She was going to go to her mother's house, about an hour away, to spend the night. I would have gone with her. Maybe I should have gone with her. But I had a different plan. I was going to confront whatever it was that had been visiting us and, if it was aggressive or not a person, I'd put it down. I secretly hoped that it was friendly. After all, it had never attacked either of us, despite having the opportunity. At the same time, the back door told a different story. I also secretly hoped to become famous by killing some mythical beast. About 20 minutes after my wife left, the sun had gone down. I sat by an open window that overlooked the locked front door and waited. I left the outside lights on. Around midnight, I got a text message from my wife's mother. She wanted to know if everything was okay, as my wife hadn't shown up yet despite calling to tell her she was on her way. I didn't know what to do. I replied that I would check and then turn off my phone. I'll deal with that in a bit. Oh, I could see my wife walking up the driveway. She walked up to the front door and tried to turn the handle. It was still locked. She looked like a kid who couldn't figure out why an unplugged TV wasn't turning on when the button was pressed. She tried to turn the handle again. I had her in my open sights. But, well... I was having second thoughts on shooting. It's not like you see on TV, where the hero hesitates because the thing looks just like a loved one and he has trouble pulling the trigger. Maybe I'm heartless, but I was mostly worried about myself. This thing looks just like my wife. What if I shoot it and it stays that way? No cop is going to believe that this wasn't a simple case of a husband killing his wife. Heck... She'd packed a bag and left to go to her mum's, which definitely sounds like the result of a fight. And then, she'd not shown up. Hey! I shouted down in my most assertive voice. My wife froze for a few seconds and then slowly looked up at me. Explain yourself. Is everything okay, sweetie? She replied like she was trying to talk to me in my own voice. It was a mediocre impression of my voice, and each word was said flatly as she inhaled. Without breaking eye contact, she reached over and tried to open the door again. Are you okay? What are you? I shouted back. What are you? She said. Or was she just repeating me? No, that wasn't me. She wasn't using my voice anymore. That was my wife's voice. Get away from me. Her eyes never looked away from mine. And now she was turning the handle harder and harder. Stay back. Stop. The door handle cracked and the door started to open. I shot her. I shot it. I don't know what I shot, but it wasn't her. It looks like her, though. I ran outside. The body feels like her. It just doesn't smell like her. It smells like copper and meat. I called my wife. She didn't answer. I called 911. I just told them to send the police. I didn't tell them why. I don't know what I'll say when they show up. I've got at least 20 minutes to think. If I tell them the truth, they won't believe me. They'll think I killed my wife. Would an autopsy show something else? God, that's a long shot. If I tell them she was trying to break in to hurt me, I've got the broken door handles to back me up. But they'll probably still not believe me. Oh. I don't know. 
I've got some time to think. fantastic little story there. Now you might have noticed I paused a couple of times during the story. This was actually a three-parter, so um, I read it as three different parts with a five-second interval in between each. I wasn't losing my mind or anything, I just forgot what I was doing. <laughs> so, it's Friday. Surely you've got something better to do than just sit around all evening listening to me. Go on, get out and have some fun. I'll be back with you on Monday with another fantastic tale of horror. <laughs> but until then, you all have a good one. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for choosing to spend your time listening to me. Now, if you enjoyed the Dr. Creepin experience, then come find me on Facebook. Come chat with me on Twitter. Listen to the background music and download it if you like on SoundCloud. Drop by the store, pick up a t-shirt. And, importantly, if you've got a story you'd like me to read, send it to Dr. Creepin's Vault, the subreddit I set up so that I could read your stories. Now, Looking forward to seeing you all again real soon, so come check me out, okay? <laughs>